Happy Sunday, boys and girls! Let me ask you a question. Uh, who do you trust? If I ask who do you trust and why do you trust that person, can you think of anyone? A lot of people can think of mom and dad. Maybe there are so many reasons you trust this um, person, right? Today's Bible lesson about Abraham and Isaac is about trust. Abraham was Isaac's father. Abraham and his wife Sarah were almost 100 years old when Isaac was born. One day, God spoke to Abraham and told him to take Isaac up on a mountain and give God the thing that he loved more than anything. So let's find out more story from the video and we can talk about more after that. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by his thorns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of the son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Abraham offers Isaac. After God gave Abraham a son, God asked him to do something that was harder than anything he had ever done before. If Abraham obeyed God's instructions, it would show that he had learned to trust God with all his heart. God called to Abraham to tell him what to do. Abraham, God called. Here I am, Abraham replied. I want you to take your only son Isaac, whom you love, to Moriah, God instructed. I will guide you to a mountain where I want you to sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Abraham could have replied, What? Are you crazy? I'm not doing that. But he did not say anything like that. Instead, he got up early the next morning, saddled his donkey, split the wood for the burnt offering, and left for Moriah with Isaac and two servants. Abraham also took the wood, a knife, some fire, and some food. It took Abraham three days to get to Moriah. While he rested each night, he would have looked up at the countless stars in the sky. Those stars would have reminded Abraham of God's promise to make Abraham's descendants through his son Isaac as countless as the stars in the sky. Abraham believed God would somehow keep his promise. On the last day of the journey, Abraham spotted God's chosen mountain in the distance. He said to the two servants, wait here while Isaac and I go on to worship, and then we will return. Abraham was confident that he would come back down the mountain with Isaac. He knew God was somehow going to provide. Abraham laid the wood for the sacrifice on Isaac to carry and took the fire and the knife in his own hands. This made Isaac wonder. Father, he asked, we have the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham didn't tell Isaac that he was a sacrifice. Instead, he said, my son, God will provide a lamb for a burnt offering. His father's answer satisfied Isaac, and they went up the mountain together. There, Abraham built an altar for the sacrifice and arranged the wood on the altar. Then Abraham turned to Isaac and tied his hands and feet together and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Isaac knew for sure that he was a sacrifice. We don't know if he said anything to his father, and we don't know how he felt, but he must have been frightened as he saw his father raise the knife to kill him. As Isaac braced for the blow from the knife that would end his life, the angel of the Lord cried out, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham lowered the knife to his side and responded, Here I am. He knew God was talking to him. God told Abraham not to harm his son. I know you respect me because you didn't withhold your only son from me, God said. God was pleased with Abraham's obedience. Just then, Abraham saw a ram with its horns caught in a thicket. The ram was stuck and couldn't run away. Abraham knew God had provided the ram to take Isaac's place on the altar. 
He untied Isaac and then loosed the ram from the thicket. Abraham and Isaac rejoiced to have the ram to sacrifice on the altar. Abraham took the ram and sacrificed it instead of Isaac. So Abraham would always remember what God did for him. He called the name of the place, The Lord Will Provide. And that's exactly what God had done. He provided a substitute to take Isaac's place on the altar. God's angel spoke again to Abraham and told him that all the nations of the earth would be blessed through one of his descendants. That blessing is Jesus Christ. Abraham put God first and it worked out. He didn't have to sacrifice Isaac after all. It was just a test from God to see if Abraham would listen to him or not. Things work out for us too. When we put God first in our lives, God never tells us to do something wrong and He always helps everything else go right. When we listen to God and do what He wants us to do, He makes it easier to get along with our family and friends. He makes it easier for us to stay out of trouble. And He even makes it easier for us to be happy in our lives. God told Abraham and God is telling us to put God first in our lives because He knows that it's good for us to listen to Him. The Bible tells us that Abraham, he thought if he killed Isaac, God would bring him back from dead. It's in book of Hebrew chapter 11 19 says but he couldn't be sure he only knew that he had to do he had to follow what God told him to do he had to put God first in his life then let me ask you boys and girls how far would Abraham go in obeying God was he all in was he really really with God all the way no matter what was he was his heart really tied with God tied to God or did Abraham love something or someone more more than God why did God tell Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac we know that God was testing Abraham but Abraham did not know he didn't know that but Abraham trusted God even when he didn't understand, even when he didn't know what's going on, even he didn't understand God's plan, he wanted to just follow his direction because he trusted him. How about us? Can we trust in God and listen and follow his direction? God will provide everything for us. Since God has provided for the hardest thing, which is salvation, which is God sent Jesus for us. Can we have faith and trust Him with everything else in our lives? We can trust God because we know He is good. So let's say, God is good. Can you say, God is good? All the time. The Bible tells us about Him and it shows us that He has been faithful all the time. God has never broken His promises. He has never done anything wrong. God never changes and He will always be faithful. And He always keep His promise and He wants to help us and He will always do what is right. We can trust God even when we don't understand His plan, even when we don't understand what's going on in our situation. Trust God trust in him let's put god first in our lives so that god can make everything else go better and be thankful and say god you are good all the time before we end it let's say this one all together god you're good all the time let's pray together dear god dear our father Help us just like Abraham. Help us to follow you. Help us to trust you more and more. And help us to have a strong faith that we believe that you provide everything, Lord God. We love you and I pray in the name of Jesus.
Amen. You guys did an awesome job and I hope you have a happy Sunday and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.